Last month, President Nelson extended an invitation as he was reflecting his approaching 100th birthday. He shared about the significance of the number 100 and how it's been used in the scriptures by the Savior in the parable of the lost sheep. And to quote the scriptures, it says, Though 99 of his flock were safely by his side, the shepherd went in search of the one who was lost. Close quote. The invitation then is to go after the one. And to do that, President Nelson invited us on his Instagram to think about these three questions over the coming months. Number one, who do you know that may be discouraged? Number two, who might you need to reconcile with or ask for for forgiveness? And number three, has there been one name on your mind lately that you haven't known quite why? And so we thought it would be an excellent roundtable discussion for our community to discuss this, as President Nelson's coined it, 99 plus one. And joining me for a candid conversation are Maria Eckersley, Alicia McDaniel, and Jordan Murray. Well, thank you guys for being here. And, you know, some of us, some people may have heard on our podcast before Maria, but there are a couple new faces, Alicia and Jordan. And so I would love for all of us to go around, maybe just quickly introduce yourself, share one fun thing, one fun fact if you want. You don't have to do that, by the way. And um, <laughs> I have this question that I'd love to ask, which is to get us into the conversation. So as we go around, what is something recently that you've been on the receiving end of that has brightened your day? Okay. My name's Jordan Murray. Um, a fun fact about me, this will be my fun fact till the, till I die, is that I love Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. Even if <laughs> she's popular right now, and when she's not popular, she's always my favorite. So <laughs> She's your ride or die. I get it. I She is my ride or die. I was like at one point like top 10 in Taylor Swift trivia on this random trivia app. So <laughs> I love that. But one thing, okay, so I just got ACL surgery. Mm. And so I feel like I've been on the receiving end of so many different acts of service. And I think something that I've been thinking about a lot is just how like people have brought me things and that like brightens mm -hmm. my day and they've, you know, like checked in on me and that's brightened my day. But like time just someone coming by and sitting with me when I couldn't move or do anything has meant so much to me more than I thought it would. And I've been on the reverse end of like, oh, they got surgery, drop off cookies, like whatever. Um, but I realized, man, I could do without the cookies, although me and Alicia love cookies, um, <laughs> if I just had time with them. So that's been something that I've learned the last two weeks. That's awesome. Thanks for that one. That's a great one. Okay, Alicia. Hi, I am Alicia McDaniel. As Jordan already had mentioned, I do love cookies. They are my love language. I am a cookie connoisseur. Um, another kind of fun random fact about me that um, people kind of know about me is that I have a mad love for pinatas. Um, <laughs> I just think they're so fun and I love to give them away. I love to give them to people. Cute. Um, you guys, uh, recently, it's been kind of a rough summer for the McDaniel family. We had the AC unit blow out and had to replace it. And now we've been told that our furnace needs to be replaced. So it's just been a very hot summer for us. And recently I was posting on social media about it. And I was, I was sharing a lot in like a really funny way because humor is kind of my way to cope with things that are hard. Like I have to laugh so I don't cry. <laughs> and so I put it out there and I was not expecting this at all. Suddenly I was receiving a notification from Venmo for like five bucks from my friend um, to go get, go get a cold drink, <laughs> you know, like leave your house and go get a drink on me. Or another friend texted me um, a picture of her plastic kiddie pool and she was like, I will bring this over to your house. I will get bags of ice. We will fill it up. <laughs> I know that you're so hot without your air conditioned home. You can sit in it and cool off. And it struck me like I, I was not looking for any kind of help. I didn't think that, um, you know, what was going on in our household would warrant any kind of like service or help. It's just life. Things break. It's part of having a home. You know, I just thought like, surely I'm not one that would be like a recipient of service. And so the fact that I had people reaching out and wanting to serve me and wanting to help me was so beautiful and so unexpected. And that's been just recently, just in this last week. That's awesome. Such small, simple ways of like, yeah. you know, you didn't even think. Yeah, I didn't okay. even think anything of it. And then suddenly my that. friend's like, do you need my kiddie pool to sit in ice in? And I was like, really? <laughs> I love amazing. that. <laughs> that's great. Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. Okay. And Maria, 
Hey, you guys, I am Maria Eckersley, and um, I'm trying to think of something. I sadly did not get to a Taylor Swift concert, much <laughs> to like the distress of my 11-year-old daughter. That would have made her dreams come true. Um, but I do love cookies, so I feel like we can all get along, and it's going to be just fine. <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys for sharing that. I think that's a good transition to discussion because— So on June 1st, President Nelson wrote this Instagram post for his approaching 100th birthday that's in September— And he said, you know, at age 99, I have no need of physical gifts. And then he invited us. So he said, one spiritual offering that would brighten my life for each of us is to reach out to the one in our lives who may be feeling lost and alone. And then can I read my favorite part? Because he after he asked those questions that we started with at the top of the episode, he said, what a beautiful example the Savior has shown us that. Through each of us ministering to just one within our reach, we can spread the love of Jesus Christ throughout the world. And I just wanted to ask, as we are getting into this conversation, what was your guys' reaction to this invitation from President Nelson? I'll chime in. I I loved how, like— intimate it felt. I felt like it was so approachable and so doable. I mean, I really think Heavenly Father made our arms deliberately short, right? Like we're not supposed to reach (laughs) across the globe. We're supposed to just reach the people that you could actually put an arm around. And I felt like his invitation was so like, don't overachieve and don't try to like, don't make a list even just Hmm. look for one person. And it just felt so comfortable to me. I didn't feel overwhelmed by it. And I loved that. Yes, Maria, I have to admit, for me, things like this, like invitations like this or things I see on Instagram, like this is pretty much how they go for me. I see it. A bunch of my friends repost it, share it on their stories, and they're like, read the caption. And uh, right. And (laughs) and I'm like, great. And I think about it for a day or two. um, But in my head, I don't really make it like a challenge. And I think like Maria said, I don't really know that that's what President Nelson was even intending. Right. Yeah. He's he's so he's the best at being like I invite you. the The word invite is so much more like do this for you. Don't do it for the checkbox or the adding another thing to your to do list. And so, but what he did call it was a spiritual offering. And so that's what's been going on in my head as I've and like admittedly because I was prepping for this episode, I have been thinking a lot more about this this I almost said challenge this invitation than I'd normally would. Like by this point, you know, a couple of months have passed. I'd be like, yeah, that was a sweet thing. And his birthday will come around and then we'll all kind of reflect on it again. And maybe it'll get mentioned at general conference. Right. But because I've been prepping for it, the word spiritual offering, I was like, well, what is a spiritual offering? And first my mind goes to this. um, And I'm not, I'm not a scriptorian. Like I really had to think about the word spiritual offering and then the whole broken heart and contrite spirit came to my mind in like relation to that. That's um, the reference is third Nephi nine twenty, And I kind of asked myself, like, why is this the language President Nelson is talking about as he's talking about reaching out to the one who's feeling lost and alone? And I think it's, you know, a broken heart and a contrite spirit is a sacrifice. So President Nelson is inviting us to not just like do this little thing and think of the one person, but I think he's really at the end of the day asking us to change our hearts, much like repentance mm-hmm. And to love like the Savior loves, because that's what he's, that's the end of that invitation that I read that uh, we can spread the love of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ's love was all about sacrifice for others. And so I think, you know, I've been thinking about it like this isn't just a challenge. And honestly, this is a little overwhelming, right? This is a big, bigger challenge. (laughs) Again, I got to avoid that word. It's a bigger invitation than just think about it. It's like changing the world. And so I don't know. Did you guys feel overwhelmed too at all? Does that resonate with you? I think uh, that is so common, Sarah, I think amongst like women specifically. Hmm. I, I think a, a, a offering like this, an invitation like this can sometimes feel like, well, if I don't do it perfectly, if yes. I'm not thinking about it every single day for the next 100 days, like then I didn't do it. Um, and I think that's a really common experience for girls. I've felt that with other invitations from like conference or yeah. or social media. And I think something that's helped me is to always remember like even just the thought, even if I think of it one time mm. and and I do one thing and maybe I didn't think of it for 100 days and maybe I didn't pray about all three of his questions and go through the whole whole thing. President Freeman talks about your experience with, with the Savior in her last uh, conference yeah. talk about like whatever level you want to have is the level you're going to have. So, you know, sometimes mm. 
the day is too crazy and your AC is out and you're melting away (laughs) and you can only do one thing. Whereas another day you're like full of energy and ready to run a marathon, you know? Right. And so I think, I don't think there's one way he intended for it to be done. I think Mm. he just wanted everyone to kind of take it their own way. And some people are going to blow it up and some people might think of it one time. Right. I think he's happy either way. Yeah, it's a gift. I think he just basically said, if you want to give a gift to me, like, and I think just like any gift, they're not asking for a specific thing. He's saying, give what you would give. And if it's, you think of this one time in the month since it's been my birthday, great. And if you think of it every day, great. Like, Mm -hmm. I just think it's a gift. He's not, he doesn't have an expectation. He just wants you to find more joy. That's his whole goal, I think. Oh, that's so good, Maria. That's so good. And I appreciate so much that Jordan spoke to As women, I think sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the do and all the be and everything that we like want to accomplish. And I've been looking at this as just um, be a little more kind. Hey, guys, I'm going to turn 100. And in honor of my birthday, maybe just be a little more kind. I mean, I think it starts there with just being like a little more kind and a little more aware of the people around us and extending them a little bit of kindness. It doesn't have to be complicated and overwhelming. And, you know, it's just loving the way the Savior would and being a little more aware and a little more kind. I Well, I appreciate that. Thank you guys to speak into my worries because I'm like, I am never going to be this perfect, right? No, but speaking of which, I mean, how are you personally responding to this invitation then? What what was the prompting for you? I had this really weird personal story that came to mind as I was like thinking of this. So when Jason was super sick, so like we talked about before, he's had cancer several times. One of the times he was super sick, we got this idea that we should get a cancer dog, right? Like we had this thought that this will help him in chemo to get a cancer dog. So we got this cancer dog. We It was like a, a dog that we adopted from somebody that he was in an abused home. And the problem was he was terrified of everybody except for me. And he eventually ran away and it became this like, while Jason's in chemo and we have all these other things, the dog ran and my whole neighborhood is searching for this dog. And we had this really interesting experience because all these relief people were coming to try to get the dog, right? They would even spot him and they would be like, Hey, we just saw Whipple. We're going to try and get him to come into our car. And, but because they, the the Whipple didn't know their voice, he would not come to them and he would run the other way. And when I was thinking about this parable and the, the lost sheep, and I was like, I think the only way, the reason he wants us in this story is because there are so many people that are in our sphere that would know my voice, but that don't know his voice yet. You know, like Mm -hmm. I kept thinking of all the people they, if I just hit them with scripture, they would, it would be unfamiliar and it wouldn't bring them in. But if I would just like use my voice to like, just like Alicia was saying, put my arm around them and just be kinder. They know my voice. And so they'll come a little closer and then I can bring them to the savior over the course of time. I think that's why he needs us. Like he's saying, yes, my sheep hear my voice, but I need you to be the relay man. Like I need you to go get them at least safe and comfortable so that they can come to me. That, that was one of the impressions that came to me. That's so really good. insightful. I think something that something that I was going to say is I don't think I have since this challenge been like, okay, every morning I wake up and I think, who's the one today? Yeah. Like I haven't. <laughs> Um, no, because that feels but, like a checkbox thing, right? That yes, doesn't feel totally. real. And I think there probably are people who have taken this challenge and like run with it. And that hasn't been necessarily my experience. But I think what I have seen is, uh, this is kind of a dramatic example, but at my work with HXP, we have this big training session for all of the trip leaders. We have 360 trip leaders that wow. go out each year. Mm-hmm. And so it's a big kind of conference. It's a few days. And we always want to give something that makes, you know, it's a a giant crowd and it's easy to not feel seen. Hmm. And these are people that are coming, um, really impressive people who can feel kind of lost in a crowd. And so we felt that it's very important that every single individual felt like they were seen. And our CEO, Amy Antonelli, she um, had this idea where she was like, let's ask every single person what their story is and see where they take it. And we were like, that's a lot of work. (laughs) Like, I just think it'll be helpful. I think we could do something with it. So we did, we spent hours and we called all 360 of them and we asked like, what's your story? And some of them would go on and on. And some of them would be like, well, this is my story. Um, But we got to know them. And then from those calls, we found one little gift. Um, Some people got like a letter from their third grade teacher because they said, oh, she changed my life in third grade. Or someone got, you know, like a bouncy ball because they collected them as a child or 
a lunchbox that their brother had given them that they lost and we found on eBay. Like, you know, just they're really small, like really um, not expensive gifts. But I can't explain the feeling of the spirit that Mm -hmm. we felt when, you know, we gave them all at the same time and they walked into this tent. And there was a a more special spirit, I think, amongst the office staff um, who had spent hours like giving these gifts than maybe the people receiving them. And yes, they were really special, really sweet. But like everybody in the tent was crying. And I thought like, why, why is this so spiritual? I really felt that there's something within all of us that really wants to feel seen and known and understood. And I thought like, where does that come from? And this is like gospel according to me, but I really feel like it is uh, that feeling that you kind of are missing because God knew you so individually and so personally and perfectly that it's like a small glimpse of that when someone sees you and recognizes you and serves you so specifically to you. Um, it's kind of like reminiscent of what it must have been like to be with our heavenly parents who knew us so perfectly. I thought about that um, and have tried to replicate that. Obviously, that's an extreme example, but um, replicating that and like someone told me, I love peanut M&Ms. I just wish I had those and and you have some, you know, mm-hmm. they, oh, at the movie theater, they loved peanut M&Ms yeah. and give them some of that. And to see the look on their face when they're like, oh, how did you remember that? Yeah. Like, it, it's just so small. It doesn't actually matter, but it's it's just I think the the concept of, of seeing people and recognizing them and and that's something that I feel like President Nelson is so good at. There's I, I this will forever just be seared into my brain. Do you guys remember when he got called? It was like the press conference right right when he became prophet, and he was calling out every individual reporter. And like had some personal story. <laughs> I remember that. Hey, I remember your dad and like how how have mm. you been? It was the most special thing. And for some reason that really stuck out to me. Like, this man is so individual. He doesn't care that this is supposed to be like a formal press mm. conference. Like he sees these people that he loves and knows and wants to talk to them. And I just thought that was really special. So That's awesome. I love your thought about the heavenly parents knowing you so well. That's such a cool insight. Mm -hmm. Because I I mean, I always think of an all-knowing God as like, he knows everything in the universe, but I never thought about like, he knows absolutely everything about me. So he would know my peanut M&Ms. He would know like the thing (laughs) I knew. That's such a cool thought, Jordan. I love that. That's so beautiful. I think a lot of what you were saying to Jordan speaks to mindfulness and mindful living. I think we are so busy and the world is chaotic and there's just a lot of noise. And I remember taking like a philosophy class in college in which we talked about practicing the art of mindful living and mindfulness. And it's kind of this, like you, you find it more in like Eastern philosophy and religion, like with meditation and with slowing down and being present in a moment, it really resonated me, you know, 20 something years ago as like a young college, 20 something kid. Um, like just something about that just really struck me. And so it's been something that I've tried to just instill in my own life and then teach my kids that like, it's okay to slow down and to be present in a moment and to pay attention. No, it's not. It's not okay. I have too much going on. <laughs> no, sister, let me tell you, we are going to do some breath work. After okay. We are okay. Done with this podcast, we are going to just take some deep breaths. We're going to meditate. But I think like, it's so important. Like, cause what happens with being present is you start to see people, which Jordan yeah. was kind of speaking to that. Um, you know, if I'm present in the grocery store and I notice that the checker checking out my groceries is kind of crabby, I'm going to look at that name on that name tag and I'm going to call them by their name and I'm going to tell them that I like their pink hair and I'm going to ask them how their day is going and maybe I'll crack a joke and see if I can mm-hmm. crack a smile. And if I'm not mindful of the people around me, I can't do small acts of service like that, you know? So I think it's just pay, be, like paying attention, like be aware, pay attention. Um, there was this mom that had a newborn baby coming out of the grocery store not too long ago. I was like, sister, why are you even out of your house? And she's like, <laughs> somebody has got to do the grocery shopping. And she mm-hmm. had four or five other little kids with her. And I, I just, 
I guess just being present in that moment, I saw her and I saw the need. And so I picked up her watermelons and loaded them in her trunk. And I was like, let me help you. And she was like, no, all these kids, they can help. And I'm like, well, let me help too. Like (laughs) you clearly need the hands. Like you don't have hands free. You've got this newborn baby crying in the cart. Um, So I just think, you know, like being mindful and being aware and in doing that, there is a lot of the ones out there. Like we are all the one. <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody needs a little love, a little help, a little encouragement. So there's just opportunities. Opportunities are abundant. And mm. yeah, just be aware. Be aware of people. Oh, See I'm... people. <laughs> yes. So I was, th- my personal experience with kind of like the invitation and thinking about it was so far. And I'm I'm still hoping and praying that there's more opportunities to be more considerate of those who I can serve. But I was driving in the car and this was actually, I think on the 4th of July or like right around then. So there was, you know, a lot going on and the evening was fireworks and pretty and warm summer night. And, you know, um, I was driving from probably a barbecue to like my friend's house or something. I don't know if this is like a Utah thing or like a, I'm a people watcher thing, but like every red light I stop at, I just like can't help but like turn left, turn right. Like I just look at people. I'm just, I'm not trying to like, I just, I'm not trying to judge or anything. I just, it's just something fun. I don't know. I just, I get to a stoplight. I can't help but be like, who's driving next to me, you know? And half the time when I do that, I'm not really even taking in who's like around me. But anyway, got to the stoplight, realized that someone on that I had just looked at was a girl like probably close to my age, a young woman. And she was crying in her car and I'm like, who mm. amongst us hasn't had a good car cry? You know, like, leave me alone. Let me cry in my car to my sad music. <laughs> and Seriously? I was like, oh, but she, you know, it was a, it was a holiday weekend and I was feeling like, oh no, like, what, is she okay? And so, but then the light turned green. So we just drive off and I'm like sitting there and then I'm like, oh, the one, the one, you know, it's coming to me <laughs> <laughs> and this little prompting. And so I'm like, okay. If there's, you know, we're on State Street, so there's a lot of red lights. I'm like, if we're going the same direction to, at the next red light, <laughs> I am going to, like, do something. I'm going to roll down my window and wave or smile or, like, whatever comes to my mind. And so, of course, a light, one light later, not even another half a mile later, we stop at the same light. And I'm like, okay, I got to do this. And I'm not this person. I don't do this. I don't. <laughs> like, I let pe- I leave people be. I am. I leave people alone. But. So I, I like roll down the window and I'm like, just say whatever comes to your mind. And I just go, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. I love you. You're going to be okay. You're going to get better. <laughs> and I was like, it always gets better, right? And she's like, she just looks at me and she's like, it does, it does. And so <laughs> awesome. anyway, I just kind of thought like I could Aww. see myself being that girl on the other end. That promise that that President Nelson said that like we can spread the love of Jesus Christ throughout the world. like. I would have felt that and I felt that in that moment, like being the conduit through which this girl could feel love, but also like being that girl at one point or another. So I think when we have a thought, like our bishop, he gave a a talk in church. It's like many months ago anyway. And he was speaking to our congregation and he was saying, if you have a good thought, if you think a good thought or think something like act on it, you can trust that. So if you think I should buy peanut M&Ms for her, trust that and act on it. If you think this girl is crying in her car, I should say like, yeah, everything's gonna be okay. Like if you think that you totally. can act on it, like trust those good thoughts that come to your mind because he said, where are mm. they then coming from? It's like, they're coming from your father in heaven because like you are his hands yeah. here, you know, like so much of his service comes to us through other people. I was just going to say something that, uh, Alicia, what you're saying about if you have the thought, act on it. I think those are sometimes like, I love that you said that because sometimes you're like, oh, that would be so embarrassing. That would be so dumb. Like, (laughs) why would I do that? Um, And I've just had so many experiences where I really kind of challenged myself to, to follow that. And it has led to so many really special experiences. And I had that thought after this challenge, invitation. Sarah. Um, I know. I know, right? <laughs> Nelson gave um, because I had uh, someone that I'm not really friends with anymore. His birthday was coming up and 
it was kind of one of those like I don't think I should send something but I have the thought that I should send something but that would be so weird Mm -hmm. and you know like social norms like (laughs) that would be so (laughs) awkward like why would I randomly send him a birthday present but I just kept having the thought and so I did it was so simple like sent it over Amazon you know like oh here's a birthday present and I I was you know a little bit embarrassed but was like whatever I'm just gonna I'm doing the 99 and one thing and we'll just forget about it. Um, and I later ran into him at a wedding and he said, I, my birthday was kind of hard. I have hit this point where I felt like maybe I don't know who's my friends anymore. And, and I used to have this, you know, like group that I always went to and, and your birthday, you are reminded like who really cares about you because who reaches out. Um, Mm -hmm. and I was so glad that I sent him that dang present because (laughs) even though we don't, you know, really talk as much anymore, I still want him to know that, you know, I, I still, hear about him and, and really think about him. And so it was one of those things where it was like, I think that that idea of you, you don't always get to know why, but um, I have been the, the receiving end of those also of like the random text of, I don't know why I'm texting you, but I feel like I should, or I don't know why I'm reaching out, but I feel like I should. Um, and it's always been exactly when I need it. And so having experienced that, I, I never want to be the one that doesn't follow through on that. And so Sarah, like, I want to find that girl at the stoplight and be like, right? tell me now that, n- tell me now your version <laughs> of this story. Cause I guarantee it was a moment of like, yeah. I need something right now, you know? And what on like in her wildest dreams, would she have imagined a stranger yelling at her through the car door? Like probably not, but it's exactly what she needed. So I think that's such a good example. But that's what makes it a miracle. That's so cool. You know? Yes. That's how you know it's the hand of God because it shouldn't happen on its own. No. <laughs> right. Love it. Well, right. how wonderful that Heavenly Father lets us do that mm. for other people. He lets us yeah. be the people that can spread the love of Jesus Christ. And mm. um, it's an honor. It, I feel like it's such an honor. You yeah. Yeah. To yeah, be able to do that's that a great way to look him. at it. Yeah, and for others. Well, so just to kind of wrap up as we're as we've had this conversation. So again, those three questions President Nelson invited us to think about were: Who do you know that may be discouraged? Who might you need to reconcile with or ask for forgiveness? And has one name or maybe many been on your mind lately that you just haven't quite known why? And then he said, if if you do this, I you know, and you bring this prayerfully to the Lord, He will help you to know who to serve and where to be and how to how to reach out to the one and and um to lift. And so I guess I'm just kind of wondering as we've been accepting this invitation and and working toward it and thinking about it, what are you learning as you're acting on these promptings about yourself or about your heavenly parents or or your savior? Hmm. You know, I I think I'm learning that I'm so loved. Um I I think God is so very very aware of us. Um, he's closer than we realize and that we kind of give him credit for sometimes, you know, I think that we forget that like he's ever present and us showing that love, like his love for us. And then showing that for others, it's just like this powerful, like rippling, you know, things aren't always easy and sometimes it's painful. And so to just have those gentle reminders that we are loved and that he's aware of us and he's aware of all of those around us and that we're all brothers and sisters and that he's looking out for us as his children. I just, I feel such gratitude for that. I was going to say, I think um, a little bit what, what you were saying, Sarah, at the beginning is sometimes I find myself seeing those questions and being a little hesitant to pray about it because I'm worried about what is he going to ask me to do? (laughs) So like, if I pray and ask like, who is in need? Like, what's my answer going to be? Is it going to be like, you need to reach out to this person that I really don't want to reach out to or something. Um, and I, I have felt that before of like, oh, I, I need to minister to this person, but I'm scared that if I pray about it, they're going to ask me to do something really grand or out of my comfort zone or I don't have time for it or whatever. But what, what I've seen from this is that a lot of times it isn't going to be something that is, you know, so dramatic and so huge like you need to drop everything and now do this thing it's you need to help put watermelons in the car as you're walking by and does that really take that much time it doesn't and like it's going to be okay and yeah i think i i had an experience with that about ministering ministering so kind of overwhelming for me and i just said a prayer like i just 
you know, what do I need to do? And, and please don't make it huge. <laughs> and my sister that I was supposed to minister to texted me and was like, hey, I found that you're my ministering sister. I need some help. Could you oh, wow. uh, do this thing? And I'm like, what the? It was like right after my prayer. And I don't really experience this stuff like that. I'm like, it's amazing. Is it this <laughs> easy that I just have to pray a prayer? It just falls into my lap. But it was something so simple. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm so glad you reached out to me and told me that because I was thinking I'm going to have to do this grand thing. And so I think sometimes just having the faith that if you, if I'm going to ask, God's going to give me the strength to do it and the ability to do it. It's not going to be something that I can't accomplish. Otherwise, he wouldn't ask me to do it. And I love, I felt the same things, Jordan, where you're like, you almost are hesitant to pray because it's, you know, like I'm really busy and I'm afraid. Um, but I, I, like, as we were studying this and I went back to the parable actually in the New Testament and you'd like, think about what it would be like to put a lost sheep on your shoulders. I only know this from finding that dog, right? By the time we actually found her, she was oh. so skinny and oh. she was so dirty oh. and she had all these, you know, cause she'd been out for weeks, like in and out people trying to catch her. And I, it, that's what the lost sheep looks like. You know, the lost sheep on the Savior's shoulders is dirty and smelly and broken. And it's not a pleasant thing to put on your shoulders. And so oh. it's one of those things where because he loves them so much and knows he can help them, oh. he carries that sheep back. And that's kind of what kept coming into my mind is like, I can't just do the happy drop-offs. I can't just do, I'll send a quick text and then I'm out. You know, like I also have to just be, that's why I liked that prayerfully consider piece. That really hit me because I was like, if I prayerfully consider, that means I'm asking Heavenly Father to really open my eyes and be like, even if I don't want to pick up this sheep, tell me which one I need to do and I'll do it. I just, I liked that invitation. It's almost like he was saying, put God first. If you pray to God first, then you'll know, you'll know how to help and which person to help. So it doesn't feel overwhelming and you don't have that fear of like, did I do the right thing? And mm. and even if it is a gritty, dirty mm. thing to pick up, he'll give you the strength and the like resilience you need to do it. So mm. that, that's what hit me this time. To that, Maria, too, I'm constantly reminded in my life that the right thing and the best thing is not always the easiest thing and the most comfortable <laughs> thing. I feel like Heavenly yeah. Father teaches me that fairly often. Um, but then I also always see in the end that it's worth it. And I might not see mm, how yes. it's affected the other person necessarily, but I see how it has increased my faith or it's helped mm. in my conviction or it's drawn me closer um, to the Savior and that it just, it proves to be worth that, you know? Yeah, I think yeah. that's what President Johnson taught, right? She said, like, if you offer relief, the Savior's relief to others, you find relief for yourself. Like, he, he's going to lift you yeah. in the process. Right, which I think is something we've all shared today. We've all experienced, like, by our efforts of finding the one, we've become the one, and we've been the person that the Savior's put on our, on his shoulders. Um, I think I would just reiterate what I've learned, and I echo all what all three of you have said, um, that this is kind of like, I, as I said, it's a spiritual offering. It's something, it's going to be uh, a change of heart. And I think it's, it's President Nelson acting, asking us to, to live in a higher and holier way as he has before in that invitation. And so, um, it's, it's asking us to become more like the savior, which isn't just a hundred day challenge. It's like a lifelong challenge of a hundred <laughs> years or more if you're granted that. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I appreciate you all sharing your testimonies with us today and being um, members of our community. And so thank you so much. I hope that we can have more conversations like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Same, Sarah. It's great to be here. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks so much for listening to this episode, and we really hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, we want to tell you about Lift Up Your Heart, a Magnify Gathering. It's our event coming this fall, and you can register at magnifythegood.com slash events. Lift Up Your Heart is a day-long gathering for Latter-day Saint women meant to remind us of what we already know, that Jesus Christ is our answer and that we're not alone. And here's the best part. There's no decisions to make, no hustle. Just come and be strengthened by inspiring speakers, uplifting music, and encouraging conversations. It's a day made for us to gather as women and nourish each other's faith. Lift Up Your Heart is for women ages 16 and up. Bring your mom, bring your daughter, bring your Relief Society sisters, or just bring yourself. We need each other and we need you. And if you're needing a little nudge to reach out to a friend, when you gather a group of four or more, you'll save $10 per registration. This year, we're focusing on President Russell M. Nelson's bold invitation to seek and expect miracles. 
specifically the miracles of joy, courage, peace, faith, and hope that will bring us the strength we need to do hard things. So head to our website at magnifythegood.com slash events where you can register now. Thank you so much for being here and we can't wait to see you.